Continuing our discussion of the chain rule with this algorithm here, let's take a look at this uh, problem. So W, W here, X, Y, and Z. W is a function of X and Y and Z. X, Y, and Z are all functions potentially of R and S. Okay, so what happens here? We want the partial derivative of W with respect to R. So how do we get from W to R? We can go W to X to R, W to Y to R, or W to Z to R. So partial W partial X times partial X partial R plus partial W partial Y times partial y partial r plus partial w partial z times partial z partial r. And I should say here with, with this example, a couple of videos ago, I showed you this, this uh, theorem here, the chain rule for two independent variables, three intermediate variables. That's exactly what we have here, three intermediate and two independent variables. And this formula right here is equivalent to this after just changing uh, R to T. Okay, so let's fill in stuff here. Uh, partial W partial X is going to be one times partial X partial R is going to be uh, one over S. Partial W partial Y is going to be two partial y partial r is going to be 2r and then partial w partial z will be 2z but we want to write 2z we want to write z in terms of r there so this is this is really z is becomes 2r partial z partial r is going to be 1 so there is partial w partial r Partial W partial S is going to be, how do we go from W to S? Through X, through Y, or through Z. Partial W partial X times partial X partial S, plus partial W partial Y times partial Y partial S, plus partial W partial Z times partial Z partial uh, S here. And what do we end up with? Okay, that one doesn't change, um, that two doesn't change, and that two times two R, those don't change. The partial derivatives of W respect to X, Y, and Z don't change. Partial X, partial S is going to be negative R over S squared. Partial Y, partial S will be one over S, and partial Z, partial S is going to be zero. And again, you can simplify this if you want to. Um, one more kind of further comment here about a uh, good way to carry out the chain rule here with diagrams here. It allows us either even kick things up a further notch. So take a look here. F is a function of X and Y. And X and Y are both functions here of S and T. But S and T are functions of Q and R. And so what this process allows us to do is to say, well, what's the derivative of F, the partial derivative of F with respect to, let's say, S here? We're just going to say how many different paths, uh, oh, sorry, I shouldn't go with S, that's an intermediate variable. Let me go with R here one of the independent variables here, how many different paths are there to go from F down to R? So we could go F to X to S to R. So that would be partial F, partial X times partial X, partial S times partial S, partial R. We can go F to X to T to R, partial F, partial X, partial, uh, x partial t, partial t partial r. 
or we could go f to y to s to r partial f partial y partial y partial s partial s partial r or we could go f to y to t to r partial f partial y partial y partial t partial t partial r and so there are four ways to go from f to r there will also be four ways to go from f to q you to have an analogous expression i'm just going to write this up here if you want to fill in all the details and calc crunch out a lot of partial derivatives you are welcome to do that okay so so let's wrap up this set of examples um but the last couple of videos in this section will deal with a slightly different topic and let's have a pre-class problem here so find partial f partial r as a function of r of s given for this f x and y and make sure your answer is in terms of r and s but you don't worry about expanding out don't worry about simplifying anything